Well, hi, Natalie. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. So tell us um, kind of where you're joining us from today. I'm in my studio in lovely Providence, Rhode Island. So yeah. Yeah. And well, I, we are gonna, go ahead. I was just going to say it would have been a lot more fun to be in Santa Fe for the opening instead of in my studio in Providence, Rhode Island. But this is good. Like, yeah. we'll work with this with the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to chat a little bit about your show today at Meyer. Um, so can you, do you want to start by just telling us a little bit about kind of the theme and the title for this year's show, which is um, the all new Trompoy Review. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> share a little bit about kind of how you came up with that, what that kind of means to you, and maybe even defining the um, Trompoy for those who may, may not know. Well, I ha you have to see my invitation. Give me one second. Oh, yes, it makes a lot more sense with the invitation. <laughs> The people, the lovely people at Meyer, at Meyer put this together for me, and it's the greatest hits, and it's an album at the, like, isn't that the coolest? And then you open it, and it's got all these great pictures inside, and then it's got the little bag. So, like, this is the greatest hits, which I just thought was the cleverest thing ever. That's awesome. I love yeah, it. They've, they've made some awesome invitations for me over the years, but this, like, out, they outdid themselves. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, it's funny. I kind of, um, you know, I had a very high concept idea for the show, like way back in January. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this very high concept thing. And then the pandemic hit. And I was like, oh, I am not going to do a big high concept thing. Like, you know what? I'm going to do things that were fun, things that I thought were some of the best pieces that I'd made with those kinds of themes. And I'm going to just go back and relook at those mm -hmm. and sort of uh, reimagine those, sort of those, those things that were like, I don't know that I felt really connected with people and people really enjoyed it. It made them yeah. happy and you know, it really sparked joy. And I was like, let's make some of those. And so I did, which is where kind of the greatest hits idea came in from. Um, and then also I did some new stuff. Um, one of the new things that I did this year were, um, I don't know if you've seen these, but they're boxes. Yeah. yeah. And then I have this broken glass in front of them and inside there's a cocktail or an adult beverage. And the theme for that is in case of emergency, break glass. So I've got broken glass and I've got something sticking out of the glass and it's hilarious. I love yeah. these. So that's kind of like, that, that was kind of my um, response to this year. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, I like that because it's, I feel like this has inspired a lot of people or just caused a lot of people to kind of simplify in a lot of ways, just their lifestyle and their, so instead of taking some big grand concept and, you know, you're kind of like, okay, let's step back and just kind of re-explore some things that I've already done and introduce a new series. But um, yeah, so I like that. Yeah. I think everybody will love it. It was really comforting to me too. It was like, you know, the, like this is, these are paintings that I've always loved. So to like to, to go back to some of those themes was really fun. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about some of those different themes. You have um, kind of like the, the collage theme. I saw like the art snob. I saw that it's kind of like the reverse of the, yeah. the verso. <laughs> and a couple of others kind of, um, or some of the young artist drawings, things like yes. that. So maybe we can go through a few of these themes and you can kind of talk a little bit about them. Yeah, that. no, you know, and I haven't done any of the crayon ones in a long time. Um, and they are super fun to do. I mean, there's just something really just so fun and so joyful about making those. And probably the fa my favorite one that I did this year is Spiders from Mars, which is also one of the, you know, David Bowie passed, which was like tragic and, and horrible. But it's also like, there's something really affirming about David Bowie, like the, that whole thing. And I thought, you know, like, this is going to be so far out. Nobody's going to want this piece. And it was yeah. the first one that went. Like somebody walked in off the street and bought it. I was like, oh, okay. Like you, you, you are my person. Like we yes, <laughs> so valid. Like this little girl and there's a lunar landscape and there's these two glam rock spiders and they got on the boots and the boas and the you know David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust oh, outfits. Yeah, and, I just I'm looking at it now. It's yeah, and it's I was very like, happy. Yeah, like that's hilarious. And I mean, if I'd had, if I'd really been thinking, I would have made a glitter frame for that. And I that's a regret. That is yeah. a regret. I'm like if. The person bought that is seeing this video, call me. Like, I, I would like to make you a glitter frame. Um, yeah, but they're just so much fun, you know? So that, that was kind of one thing I did. The back of the canvas paintings or the back of the painting paintings are ones that I've always loved to do. Like, 
I mean, seriously, I've been threatening these guys at Myers for years. I'm like, I'm going to do a whole show of nothing but the back of the pants. And they're like, <laughs> maybe a few, maybe just a few. Um, but those are just, I love, they're just, they're so much fun to make. So yeah. And, and it gives me a chance to like, I love to put text. Like almost all of my paintings have some writing on them, mm. which I've sort of noticed. I'm like, that's weird. But like, I like to have writing, whether it's like a yeah. scrap pile or some kind of way to work in some text or something like that. Or if it's a sticker on the side of one of the little trompe boxes, like mm -hmm. I just feel the need to have some text. So that really satisfies that for me. I'm like, oh, look, I'm writing on the back of it. So. Yeah, that's cool. Now, do the ones that are your new series, the In Case of Emergency, do they have, is that actually written on the sides, the In Case of Emergency break glass? Or is that? Yeah, there, there's stamps on the, there's a sticker. It's not a real sticker. It's a drop away sticker. But there's a sticker on the side of a hand breaking a glass. And it's oh says, In God. Case of Emergency break glass. Which, honestly, when I make these box paintings, it's my favorite part. Oh, I have something to show you. I want to yeah. show it. show and tell. It's not just a video. Hang on. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> This will be at the gallery by the time this video airs, but this is my last little box painting for the show. It's a little um, pomegranate painting. Oh my and but my favorite thing about doing these, it's not varnish, it'll be varnish later, but I was actually doing the little stamps on the side. And oh, so, so this one says, to show us. Yeah, this one says warning may contain seeds, which I just thought was hilarious. And then on this side, I've got the little hands holding the pomegranate. So yeah, so a lot with, um, especially with the cardboard boxes, it's really finding that stamp on the side. Like the one I did with these peppers, it says flammable, which was actually oh, Jacob Flapper's yeah, idea, not my idea, his idea. He's like, that's what you should put on the side. And I'm like, you're right, sir. Um, <laughs> so little yeah, this little is like the, the series that these, these glass ones came from, is like your box. This is something that you've been doing for a little while. Yeah, I've been doing some cardboard boxes and then I got the idea. I really wanted to do the Trompe in historically in Trompe um, Broken glass is a thing. I didn't come up with that. I mean, they've been doing that a very long time. Boulet, who was a very famous French painter back in like 1750-ish, did some incredible stuff with broken glass over engravings. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's like so good. And of course the engraving is also Trompe So it's mm -hmm. just like another level. But I really wanted to do the break glass. And like with all the stuff that's going on, it's like I had the box and the panel and I'm like, oh, that would be amazing. I'll like paint the frame. Mm -hmm. So, and, well, you know, cause this has turned into show and tell. I have the, yes. I keep, I actually make these up. Oh yeah. Oh my yeah. God. You actually break the glass to I break the glass. There is a piece of glass taped in the frame. I don't know how well you can see the Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the glass. <laughs> but yeah, no, I set, I like totally set these up. People are always like, Oh, do you really set them up? And I'm like, Oh yeah. Like I'm I'm not making this up out of my head. <laughs> well, and with the collages, I know that you you actually build the collages too and the tape and the beads and everything before you paint yeah. them. And so sometimes because your paintings are so realistic, I know there's been a little bit of confusion on the internet when you post things like on Instagram or something and people think it's a collage and that the painting is the collage and vice versa. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I had, um, again, I just posted the, the one, the little Peppers painting on Facebook a few days ago and a very fancy art dealer that I know in Charlotte was like, so you glued the canvas in the box? And I'm like, no, I think the out outside of a panel to look like a box. I'm like, it's all paint. And he's like, mm. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> like, I sent him a message. I'm like, here, here, see? Yeah, it's let a me do some panel. So it was, yeah, which, and, and you know, but honestly, like that is my favorite part really is like with Trump Loy is when you really do that moment when they kind of get it and they're like, oh my God, that's painted. It's like that, that realization, that connection. So that for me is my favorite part. <laughs> Do you happen to have anything, anything in your studio you can show us, like where you work or where you kind of set up your still life kind of scenes? Yeah, that no, we, we can do a tour and I don't even have to get up because like I have disclaimer time about my studio. We, um, I moved here four years ago from New Jersey and in New Jersey I had a gorgeous studio. It was like 1500 square feet. There was a fireplace. There was like, you know, North light, like these high ceilings. It was incredible. I've never had a studio that beautiful in my life. 
and we came here and we we're like okay we're just gonna like live here for a while figure out what we're doing my husband like changed careers and went back to school and all this stuff and so we just kind of stayed in this house and i had this little bedroom i mean it is teeny weeny like all basically my entire studio is still in a box in the basement like from when i moved in four years ago i'm like just label it and leave it there yeah but the interesting thing is like i just think it's really important to say like you do not have to have a fancy studio you do not have to even have a big studio. I think like just as long as you have a space to create and you have your materials, like I think the work that I've done in the last four years since I've been in Rhode Island has been some of my best work. And you know, and you got to go outside to change your mind. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so like your work is so, I mean, it, it's small, it's not huge canvases or anything. And it's exactly. such a tight process that it almost seems like being in an intimate space might actually like lend itself to your style of work. It's kind of cozy. Like in New Jersey, I had two rooms. I had like these, these huge room where all my packing and shipping and still life props and all that was, but I actually painted in the store, what was originally built as the storage room of the third floor of this house, like, <laughs> which was people would come over and they're like, you're painting in the room with no, I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like the show studio and then the studio where I actually was painting. Right. But, yeah. This is people always get like are sort of horrified by this. This is my calendar page. So I actually put these up on the wall and they're calendar pages I make myself and I write down what I do every day. And so I can plan ahead for shows like when things have to be shipped by and varnished by and like mm -hmm. it helps me stay really organized. Um, I do about a year at a time. <laughs> and you kind of look up there and be like, oh, I have been busy. <laughs> Um, this over here is, can't see what you can see. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is, I actually, this is my flat wall. This is where like flat collages go, things that are taped to a wall, that sort of thing. And, and so those are, are some of your collages right there that you're painting from. Um, these are actually, uh, part of that children's drawing series. Okay. Um, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know how, how well you can see all this. Yeah. <laughs> So that goes over there. And then on this wall, I, I collect um, post-its. Mm -hmm. So like I can keep all my ideas organized, like ideas for new paintings. Because sometimes, you know, it's like you'll be inspired by a quote or a piece of poetry or like a, a word, you know, like weird little things like that. And I just tape it up to the wall. So yeah. <laughs> and this wall too. Yeah, I also have them on. You have lots of ideas. <laughs> I do. Well, you know what? Like, yeah. And, and the thing is, is if I don't write them down, I forget. Right. You know? and, and that's like, to me, is like a horrible thing to let that get away. So, yeah. And then I've got my paint organized here. Yeah, I've got all my great. brushes. Um, I've got like a big flat file thing. I'm trying not to make anybody sissy. <laughs> this side of this side of the room. Um, again, I have like ideas for new paintings taped up there, just images. Um, this is where I put my still life stuff um, where like, this is another nest painting that I'm, I'm kind of thinking about doing. I haven't gotten into this yet. So is that what we're looking at? Yeah, that, it's, it's a nest in a box. It's the setup, okay. Cause it's, yes. it kind of looks like it could be the painting because your paintings are so realistic. So I just want to clarify. Let, no, 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 yeah, let's be clear. That's, yeah, that that's is a real the actual nest. nest, okay. <laughs> And a real cardboard box. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I have two long tables on this side and that's where I use, like if I'm setting up still life or three dimensional things, I tend to put them there. Okay. Um, and this last wall is just a big shelving unit with all of my junk on it. So like I have a few still life props that didn't, that did make it out of the basement. <laughs> but I thought, oh, I might want to bake that. Yeah. Um, but the good news is, is we actually bought this house in December. And so we're going to start doing a bunch of renovations downstairs so I can redo, I can kind of have a studio space back again. I'm probably still going to paint up here mm -hmm. um, just because I like being up here, but like, it's going to give me a whole new area for like packing and shipping and storing my frames and like, oh, having my stuff out. And, like, right. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> And those props that you kind of showed us, are your props for your paintings, do you just kind of collect, do you get an idea for a painting and then kind of go hunt for the right props or do you, vice versa, do you see the prop, the little piece and say, oh, that would be cool, you know, Both. paint? Both. It's, 
it's definitely both. I mean, like, like when I had the idea to do the, the shot glass painting with the shot of tequila, I knew I was going to do a shot of tequila. Like, there was no way I wasn't going to do that. So, but you know what? I don't own any shot glasses and I didn't have a salt shaker. <laughs> so I'm like at the Goodwill, like, you know, so there's that. But like, this, this is one of my favorite props. I love this guy. Um, this was like me walking around Hobby Lobby. And they had these amazing plastic dinosaurs. I mean, they're like, they're so realistic looking. And like, I've painted this guy, I think three or four times I was about now. to say, he looks very familiar. <laughs> Isn't he awesome? Yeah, so he made it out of a box. So like, sometimes you find things like, you know, plastic T-Rex and you're like, T yeah. <laughs> like, let's paint them. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I can talk about one, uh, just a few like specific pieces, you know, yeah. Show just quickly. So I think this one that I'm looking at is new, but correct me if I'm wrong. Trudy was a genius. Is that one that's in the current? Trudy was a genius. I, I have made that one before, um, but this is a totally different look for this piece. But really, I just, I like painting bacon. Yeah. But it's like not my first bacon painting. <laughs> yeah, and it's real, it's like you cook fun. the bacon and use it as a prop. I do. I do. I cook. Usually I'll make like five or six slices and you dry them out and you get them really flat because like, I know it sounds crazy, but when they cook, they curl. And sometimes like, you know, you want the most flattering piece of bacon, you know, like you want it to break. They're not, sometimes they're not pretty, you know, they curl up or they're too brown or they're whatever. And I have painted a lot of bacon and over the years, I will tell everybody a bacon painting tip. You dry it out, get all the grease off it, and then you rub it down with Vaseline. And that keeps it shiny in the studio and helps it be preserved. So, because like painting a piece of bacon will take a couple of days, like, mm -hmm. you know, and you can't just take it right out of the skillet and hang it on the wall because it's completely greasy and will stain the wall. So, yeah, but I like the Trudy painting a lot with the hearts yeah. and like, I just feel like yeah. it's very empowering of Trudy. So. And you have <laughs> of the kind of like Western themed ones, it looks like it's Painted Pony. Is this in this show with the turquoise? Yeah, pony? I think that is. Yeah, that's, that's from like where I'm doing the, the real trompe l'oeil collage stuff. And I love paint with turquoise. It's so much fun. Yeah, that's a good, it fits well in Santa Fe. I think that people appreciate it there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, and so, and going forward, are you, are you going to continue with the, you know, working in these different series that you've, you know, from your greatest hits? Are you, is there anything new percolating in your mind for the future are you going to continue the the breaking glass pieces or do you know what direction yeah. you're heading i'm definitely going to do a few more of those because those have been super fun and like i feel like i'm finally getting getting the hang of paint in the glass like i feel like i'm getting familiar with that so i definitely want to do a few more of those but like you know i'm kind of thinking about maybe putting other things in the box like it doesn't necessarily have to be adult beverage so i'm kind of looking forward to that um, I'm hoping to do a few more really large scale collage paintings this year or coming up. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of kind of those same same things that I've been working on. Well, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Well, I hope you have a great show. Is there anything else you want to share about this body of work in particular, or um, the exhibition as well? Yeah. No. I just. I. I just. I. No. <laughs> I just, I like the greatest hits thing and, and I really love everything that Meyer put together for me. So, you know, I'm, I'm sad that I'm not going to be there. Yeah. Um, but there is one more thing I should show you. Yeah. My, I got to show you my studio. Yeah. 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 <gasps> this yeah. is Dewey. This is Dewey. <laughs> Now, I was know why Dewey, is Dewey, is that right? Mm -hmm. Why has Dewey not made it into, has Dewey made it into any of your paintings? He's been in some of the crayon paintings. Okay. Yeah, he's, okay. he's modeled some of the dog crayon paintings. I'm sorry, I just woke him up. He's like, oh my God, you woke me up. Yeah, I didn't pan the floor, but it's covered in dog toys and dog bed. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but he's like, he's the best. Now to meet your muse. <laughs> You know, he keeps me company. He's just a great boy. Oh, I love it. He has I been my it. studio assistant for almost eight years. So, yeah. it's always good to have a little like doggy muse around. 
is, and you know, he reminds me that I have to get up and like walk outside and move around like every couple of hours. So like, he is super good at that. Yeah. So. Yeah, but then well, I appreciate you doing the interview and all that. Thank you so much. Well, hopefully we'll see you in Santa Fe next year. <laughs> Maybe next. Yes, year. like next year. Cause like, yeah, I mean, I miss coming out there. It's always so much fun to do that every year. So yeah. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you. Thanks for chatting. And I hope the show yeah. goes great. It looks like it already is. You've got a handful already sold and I think it's going to be great. Yeah. No, I'm, I think I, I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> That's the theme of 2020s. <laughs> But, all right. Well, it's nice to see you. It's and good to see you too. I'm sure we'll be talking soon. All right. Thanks for your help. I'll talk to you later. Absolutely. Bye.